In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and record a PowerPoint presentation inside of Panopto and integrate that into your Blackboard Ultra course. We've already gone ahead and looked at how to set up our Panopto course tool in previous examples. But let's say we want to go ahead and add some new content into a week one module. I'll select the week one module and inside this container, which is the week one module, I'll proceed to the week one instructional materials folder that's in this template. When I select this, the temptation might be to go straight to the content market. I prefer not to do that because going straight to the content market is going to upload just the video direct. What I'd really like to do is create a description for this. So I'll select create and I'm actually going to choose document. This allows me to do some of the text wrapping that I've demonstrated in previous uh, videos. Here what I'll do is now I will call this week one lecture and I'll select add content. When I add content notice that the text editor comes up first. I'll create a title and I like to do this over again. Week one lecture one. Here I might now play some new text that explains the significance of this. Please watch this video and PowerPoint presentation for week one. And I would normally probably add more description to this, specifically what are the objectives and why you're watching this video. But for this purpose, I'm gonna push forward Next, I'm going to go up to the upper right hand corner and I'm going to choose insert content. I'll select insert edit LTI item. My content market opens up and I'm going to choose Panopto content market. Notice that the tool isn't here because we've already added it to our course. So I'm just going to select the content market. When I do this, I can choose from pre-existing content that I've created but let me show you how I might set up a new one. I'll choose record this time. I'll call this week one lecture video and I'll select record. It'll prompt me to open Panopto and as Panopto opens up, my screen may look a little different than yours. I'm on, remember the Mac version, you may be on the PC version. So some of the settings you may have to go in and adjust on the Windows version. But what you're ultimately looking for is some type of a button that allows you to record the PowerPoint or the keynote slides. In my case, notice that it is on the lower left-hand side. This needs to be enabled. I'll go ahead and I will select that. I'm also gonna make sure that I capture my display screen and my webcam simultaneously. I can always mute or switch between these during editing. So I don't have to worry. It's better to capture all of the content and then you can edit it together in post-production. We'll go ahead and select record. And now that I'm recording, I'm gonna bring my PowerPoint into display and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open the PowerPoint up for you. I'm gonna present and navigate these PowerPoint slides in full screen. There's only three slides here, but I'm just using these for demonstration. And then I'm gonna end my slideshow and I'll go ahead now and inside of Panopto, I'll select stop. What this is going to do now is begin the upload process once I provide a description, so I'm just gonna call this week one lecture notes. Obviously you might call this PowerPoint or something more specific. And the upload process is going to begin here. Notice that this upload is occurring and what's going to happen when this upload is complete is that we'll go from uploading to a processing slides. And this might go by kind of fast, but what's going to happen here is Panopto is going to uh, basically select each frame that you advanced your PowerPoint slide, and it's gonna take a snapshot of that image. 
And that's how it's going to create your table of contents uh, or your slide deck, essentially. And Panopto does this automatically for you. Some things that you do want to keep in mind about this is that inside of Panopto, the slides themselves don't automatically um, keep the hyperlinks or the videos. So do be mindful of that. You will need to, um, if you want to add back in hyperlinks or uh, any types of video content, you'll have to watch the following tutorials on how to do that inside of uh, the Panopto editor. But I do want you to at least be aware of that. Now that the status is completed, what I can go ahead and do is I can close this Panopto tool or I can choose to select the editor. Um, you've already seen me use this editor before, so let me show you a different way to do this. The video is technically here right now, and this is still our integration, our tool. That's the lecture. It's complete. I'm going to go ahead to the lower right hand corner and insert this. Once this inserts, it'll ask for, again, a name, and we'll go ahead and select lecture video. And then I'm going to uh, select save here. Now, if I want to go ahead and make adjustments to this video, or I want to edit this video, or maybe I'm one of those instructors that by accident is getting the prompt that uh, students need access granted, made a mistake. So the easiest way to correct any of these or to make modifications is find the video, and then in the lower right-hand corner, there's an arrow that points diagonally towards the upper right. If we select this, we're going to get access to the full Panopto um, software. What will happen is Panopto is going to open in the browser version, not inside Blackboard, because right now we're viewing this in Blackboard. So let's go ahead and select this lower right-hand corner diagonal arrow that says Watch in Panopto. And you'll notice that in my um, Panopto area, I have the view here. But I also have these tools along the upper right hand corner. And one of them is settings for the video. So if I need to ever modify the settings or the folder location maybe is off or the permissions are off, I would come into this area and I would look at this top folder. I need to make sure that that matches my course all of the time. If yours doesn't, you'll need to edit this. Or if I want to edit my actual video, I can select the pencil up here, and this is going to allow me access to actually go into the video editor itself. Notice now, as the instructor, I can go through and I can change my table of contents on the left-hand side, and I can also use the video editor here on the right-hand side. We're going to explore how to use this video editor and these table of contents and captions in additional videos, but I just want to show you how you can gain access to this at this point. You'll notice now that as a student, I can view Panopto. Let's actually look at that in student view for a minute. So I will leave the week one lecture module, and on my course in details and actions, I'm going to navigate down to where it says student preview on the side. Don't forget to exit this mode when you're done. When I select this, I can now experience this as a student would experience it. Notice the look is a little bit different. So we'll go to the week one folder. We'll select instructional materials. Ah, and it says it's empty. Well, it's empty because we haven't made that content available. So what I'm going to do is come back up to this upper right hand corner. I'm going to edit or exit, sorry, preview mode. I go back to my week one folder where I have my instructional materials. I'm going to now find my lecture that I've created and I'm going to make this visible to students. And now we're going to go ahead and go back to student preview mode. I'm going to go into week one module into instructional materials, week one lecture, and here's my video player as the students would see it. Remember, they can view it in application or they can view it 
in Panopto, which will open a different browser tab on that. I hope that you found this tutorial useful. For more information, please visit us at the Faculty Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning.